sight, life was good during this stretch. Soon the trail leveled off to my favorite area of the day, which we came to around 11 a.m., just over seven miles into the day, marked by a footbridge marker on the map. We just had one little stretch where we couldn't really tell where the trail went to because it was covered in, a, as you can probably hear, a little bit of leftover snow. And then there's also a little river stream in this little kind of swampy high grass spot. But it turns out that little river stream was actually the trail. It was just, uh, had some water going down it. And a little bit of snow here in this shady spot. About to come out to a big open field. If I can see Josh in front of me hanging out. Wow, this is cool. Nice big open area with the river running through it, mountains in front of us, cool wooden bridge up ahead. Nice big clearing. Definitely the best spot so far, as far as the view goes. I gotta take a picture. You'll suddenly come out of the trees into a large, tall, grassy meadow with an old wooden footbridge crossing over the small river stream known as Chickadee Brook. This large meadow sits at 2,300 feet, and I was told this place used to be called Tracy Shanty Clearing or just shanty clearing. It is completely the type of place that you'd see in Adirondack pictures. And the rustic nature of this 10 foot wooden bridge, just perfect. The bridge was three logs across the stream with a rustic log handrail along the left side. The meadow, of course, is the type of place where hikers boots will probably get a little wet too. It's also the type of place where you'd expect to see a bear hanging out. So we walked over the bridge and then kept moving along after taking a few photos, of course. I mean, it was awesome. After crossing through Shanty Clearing, we went back into the woods, and this next stretch of the trail was without a doubt the most difficult section of our day. The trail was like a river stream as you continue climbing up towards the scenic viewpoint. There was a ton of blowdown here, which involved a lot of little bushwhacks around the downed trees to continue on the trail. So we've climbed about 500 feet of elevation since the, uh, the Salmon River Bridge, and now we are about 400 more feet of elevation gain until we're at the scenic viewpoint. The woods are nice and open. Very beautiful day. Slow, gradual elevation gain. Beech trees, pines, spruces, the whole shebang. All the boys and girls are here today. The higher we went, the more snow we encountered as well, as you'd imagine. With that in mind, since it's spring and the snow is melting, every step became a post hole as the water ran underneath the snow, causing the snow to collapse on pretty much every step. It was extremely slow going and every step took a lot of effort. Though since we crushed all this snow, it probably melted a week or two earlier than it would have. Walking for what feels like an eternity now in a stream, more or less. Water, standing water, slightly flowing. Little snow and very slow moving. We kept climbing, albeit slowly, but after struggling and moving as fast as we could, which wasn't as fast as we hoped, we came to the final push up towards the scenic viewpoint, which gains a good amount of elevation in a short time, so it's a bit steeper. It reminded me a lot of climbing up Scarface Mountain for whatever reason, if you've ever climbed that peak here in the ADK. It's not a lot of elevation, about a thousand feet of gain stretched over a few miles since Terrell Pond, but there's some areas that are quick, steep spots, especially as you approach the viewpoint, which is 3,000 feet elevation. There wasn't much that could be done in regards to the snow, the ice, post holing, and the terrain, but such as springtime hiking in the Adirondacks, especially on minimally traveled trails like this one, and clearly nobody had been on this part of the Northville Placid Trail in a long time. There was no sign of footprints anywhere. Walking along the ridge in the snow, the old snow. It's uh, pretty much every other step, you know, you sink in up to your knee, making it slow moving, but the hard sections are nice, easy to move along. But we should be approaching the scenic viewpoint here. It's definitely changing of the seasons up top here. 
still has quite a bit of old snow. But uh, some of it's icy, some of it's not. As we climbed and followed the trail markers, which again were decently distributed up here, we came across some big moose tracks in the snow. So that was cool. It also put us on high alert. The trail never truly goes to a summit of any kind, and it doesn't go to the top of the ridge either. It's just a scenic viewpoint, as the map says. And I'm not trying to play spoiler, but I think this will also save people from major disappointment if they build up this moment in their head throughout their hike. There are some views up here, but not a ton. It's not like being on a cool Adirondack summit. And yes, you can see some views, but I think the map should change scenic viewpoint to read trail high point. I feel it would lead to much less disappointment in the hearts and souls of thru-hikers on the NPT. But that's just my opinion. You be the judge. And also, don't listen to me either. Don't, don't even listen to me. So we're on the, uh, the ridge here, and uh, according to my GPS, we have passed the scenic viewpoint. So, leading me to believe the scenic viewpoint is just this one kind of spot where you can see some of the bigger mountains around. I'm pretty sure you can see Seward from there. Yeah, we passed it, and now we're making our way over the ridge and back down through this lovely, lovely pine forest here. We're going to eat some lunch soon when we find a good spot to sit and eat lunch. Once over the hump, we began our trip down. Not quite as slow as it was coming up, but equally as challenging and frustrating. Sinking deep into the snow everywhere, spruce traps nonstop, hearing the water running underneath the snow where we're stepping on, and slowly walking over it, hoping the snow will hold, only to then sink in and drop just after we thought we were in the clear. It was again slow moving, and just plain annoying, to be honest. Just got caught in a gnarly spruce trap up to my waist. First the one leg went in, and then as I tried to get the other leg to get me out, that leg went in, and I was up to my waist. I have a feeling this is going to be quite the descent right now. Well, there's some nice views in front of us now through the trees. Nice mountain views here. But we carried on moving as quickly as anybody could, and since we planned to eat lunch at the scenic viewpoint, but we didn't due to there not really being anywhere good to sit, and it was cold, we decided to get off the mountain and eat once we got out of the snow and lower elevation. Slowly and surely, we eventually made it off the mountain and back below the snow line and back on a muddy leaf-covered trail. Well, we have made it off that little mountain, and we are back down to dry land. Thank God. The, the descent that we just had was brutal. The ascent, also brutal. But uh, both mentally difficult and physically difficult in their own ways. Coming down was all the leftover snow, so you're sinking in and you're sliding and uh, the snow is breaking. It is very difficult, very challenging to come down. A couple spots where we had to look around for trail markers. And then going up was like going through a swamp, a river. Then it got really steep actually for a minute. And then we just were over the hump and coming back down. But now we're back down. Feels phenomenal because do not sleep on that climb here on the Northville Plastic Trail. We kept saying, should we stop here and eat? No, let's just keep going and find somewhere better. So then we'd keep walking. Should we stop here and eat? No, let's, let's find something better. And then we kept walking some more. We did this a number of times, and then a half hour or so after we were back down, away from the snow, we came to a river with a rock, and I said, okay, we're stopping here. It's not great, but I'm starving. After about 13 miles into our day, I was ready to eat lunch, especially after all the climbing we just did. And since this was day one and I started from home this morning, I packed a solid sandwich that I made this morning in my kitchen. A huge ham and provolone sandwich on an everything bagel with homemade mayonnaise and lettuce. And per usual, it hit the spot. So we sat and ate our lunch along a little river stream, and it was lovely. Well, it's 1.20 and we're going to uh, stop for lunch now here at uh, Sandy Creek. Nice little river, lots of rocks to sit on, a good spot to eat some lunch. Day one is uh, halfway over at that point because it's lunchtime. Let's eat. 
After lunch, we refilled our water, which after discussing backcountry water with author and Adirondack legend Eric Schlimmer on his Summit Session episode of this very podcast, where he enlightened us on his studies on backcountry water, we didn't filter the water. We just filled our bottles right up, scooped straight out of the river, the way God intended. And it was great. We actually only pumped water once all weekend, come to think of it, when we were at Long Lake. The rest of the time was untreated raw river water, and we were just fine. Which would have been Eric's prediction as well, so thank you to Eric for that. After lunch, we began our push to Long Lake. About 50 yards after we sat down for lunch, the trail became a textbook, picture-worthy trail through the woods. About seven feet wide, dry with dirt and leaves on the ground, and lined for miles with six-foot spruce trees on both sides of the trail. It was amazing. For both morale, after that hellish couple of miles spent climbing in the snow, and because it looked perfect, it was easy to bust out faster miles on too, so that was awesome. The trail eventually hits a junction with the NPT Spur Trail, but we stayed right following the blue markers, and then soon after that, the trail goes on to an old tote road, which is what most logging roads are actually called. Tote roads are where the trucks drove, and logging trails are where the machines drove, but typically we just call them all logging roads. So we passed the Spur Trail Junction, and we kept going straight, and now we are out of the nice uh, Christmas tree-lined trail, and now we are back onto a logging road, a tote road. We're onto a tote road. Nice leaves, hardwood trees all around. No leaves on the trees, of course, all on the ground. Making good time though. The trail's dry now and pretty much kind of what we envisioned it would be like. Uh, so it's been very pleasant since we came back from lunch. We also passed a pretty sweet footbridge over one of the rivers back there. And we're making our way towards Long Lake. And I enjoyed this road since it runs between two small ridges before taking a hard right into the woods marked by a trail sign. From here, it's 1.1 miles to the Route 28 North Road crossing in Long Lake. A nice trail through the woods in different sections. One stretch in particular entails a good quarter mile boardwalk through a moss covered spruce forest that again had a particularly spooky but fun vibe to it. I really enjoy those types of woods. So this wooden boardwalk just keeps on going all the way around. You can hear the cars in the distance, so we must be close to the road, but I'm really vibing this boardwalk, mixing it up nicely, and, this, and the woods that it's in is pretty cool. Not long after the wooden planks ended, we could hear the sounds of cars in the distance, and we could start to see the cars moving between the trees up ahead. We were at the Route 28 North crossing. Ah, back to civilization. Time to cross the road. We made it to the road, walking out of the woods to cross Route 28. Cool. Back to civilization as we're here crossing this beautiful double yellow line road. And there's a nice sign across the street telling us exactly where to go. Northville Placid Trail. Long Lake Shattuck Clearing Section, Forest Preserve, the High Peaks Wilderness Area, here on Tarbell Hill Lane. So the trees have some trail markers on them. So we're just gonna walk down the street here, walk down the road, and then eventually head into the woods. So we are approaching Long Lake, and our goal for today, Catlin Bay, but I have a feeling we're gonna go past that and either go to Kelly Point or Rodney Point, but at this point, probably Kelly Point. It's easy to overlook this next fact, despite the map clearly stating it, but we had no idea the trail actually goes up Tarbell Road for 0.7 miles. So it took us by surprise, but I guess both Josh and my eyes just overlooked that element on the map. There's trail markers on the telephone poles as you go up the road. Regardless, you're going to walk on the pavement for 0.7 miles and up a big old hill until you're coming to the Long Lake Trailhead on the right side of the road. Walking up the, uh, the road here, it's nice to walk on blacktop, albeit hard on the old, the old dogs, but if you walk on the sand on the side of the road, you get the flatness of the blacktop road with the gentleness of the sand. 